So I took a look at some of the earliest maps of some of the best mappers out there. I'm going to compare them to their recent maps just to see how they've done it. What really makes their maps so good? First, let's talk about the most important thing, the patterns. The main thing that I noticed with a lot of the older maps is that they didn't have great flow. When you're trying to jam out to a song, you want your hands to really flow into the next box pretty smoothly. But a lot of the maps just didn't. There were a ton of parody issues that made hitting the next box really awkward. In the recent maps, there were absolutely no flow issues at all. I was never surprised by a block because of what direction it was facing or what lane it was in. The patterns of the recent maps also match the sounds and the energy of the music a lot better. Take Alice for example. The pattern during the buildup of Nightwatch just doesn't match the energy of what the song tries to bring. But take a look at the buildup during Virtual Raid. It's such a better way of mapping a buildup. You can feel the energy rising as you're playing. Sliders also weren't used very well in the early maps. In the newer maps, sliders are used to add a lot of emphasis or they're tied to a specific sound in the song. In the older maps, they kind of just seem to be used randomly. Next, I want to bring up the symmetry littered throughout the older maps. I don't know why there was such an emphasis on symmetry, and I guess I'm more talking about when you swing the sabers at the same time, not like playing a pattern and then mirroring it. Here, take a look at Joe's Tastic's old map of Skidibi just to see what I mean. Versus What's New Scooby-Doo? A lot of times when you hit two blocks at the same time, your sabers are going in different directions and they're not so symmetrical. I mean, the newer maps have these kind of blocks for sure, but they don't rely on them as heavily. I also want to mention that one of the things that makes these old maps pretty unbearable is that they were pretty slow. If you're making a map, make sure that the speed matches the difficulty. People playing Expert Plus don't want the blocks coming at them this slowly. And look, I know that this is expert, but I think it's a little too slow for expert too. Next up, let's talk obstacles. I didn't truly realize how important the walls were until I watched these back. In the older maps, there are a ton of bland long walls, which I'm totally guilty of. But in the newer maps, they're used to their full potential. There are half walls, and a lot of the long walls are broken up into smaller patterned walls. Another thing is that the newer walls don't try to get in the way. Instead, they try to make you sway and dance. What I call the dance factor. In the older maps, walls are used as filler and not as part of the music. I absolutely love this. You can see right here that the walls are tied to the guitar part. In the older maps, there were also a couple duck walls that seemed to come out of nowhere. Like, no walls, and then all of a sudden, BAM! Time to duck. I couldn't really get as clear of an image about bombs, though. There were definitely not as many used in the older maps, but just like with the walls, when they are used now, they're placed with intention, whether that be to match the music or used as resets. Now, of course, we have to talk about the lighting. The biggest thing I noticed is that the newer maps all have great lighting with a lot of variety that match the energy of the music. You can tell that there are separate sections to the light show. The lights of the buildups are very different than the lights of the drops. The different types of lights, like the lasers and ring lights, are often used for different sounds. Watch this and really pay attention to the lights of this buildup and drop just to see how Alice places every light to match perfectly. So to sum it all up, I guess I could just say map with intention. 
Make sure that the patterns flow well and match the song. Don't be lazy by using filler walls and bombs. Make sure that they're there for a reason and that they look good being there. Instead of long, boring walls, break them up into smaller walls and make a pattern that matches the sound in the music. And make use of half walls. Lastly, don't be lazy with the lights. There are so many options for lighting, and again, always try to match the energy of the song. Choose different sounds in the song to match up with different lights, walls, and bombs. Make sure there are different sections to the light show, and make use of all the different colors. Just have fun with it. Well, I guess this means I have a lot to live up to for my next map, huh? We'll see. Bye!